What's going on, everyone? My name is Hunter, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Svelte Kit and Pocket Base series. In this video, we're going to be adding some toast to our form interactions, as well as begin to render out some of the projects on the home page of our application. In order to easily add toast to our application, we're going to be using this Svelte French Toast library here, and it is inspired by React Hot Toast, if you're familiar with that library from React. So all we need to do to use this is to just install it with NPM, and then we're gonna put a toaster somewhere in our application. We're gonna put ours in our layout. And then from anywhere else inside of the application, we can call this using toast.success or toast.error or toast.emoji, whatever you'd like. I'm just gonna show you a few different examples inside of our application. And then you can go forward and do it wherever else you would like to do it throughout the application, okay? So let's go ahead and see how we can get this set up. So inside of the terminal of our application, we're just gonna run npm i svelte french toast dash d to install that. And then we'll go ahead and start up our server. I already have pocket base running in the background. So if you don't already have yours running, go ahead and start that up as well. And then all we need to do is come into our routes inside of the layout.svelte. And then at the very top here, we're going to add a toaster component. And we're going to import that from Svelte French Toast. So we're going to say import toaster from Svelte French Toast. Let's check our application to make sure nothing broke here. We can refresh. And one of the first places I think that we should add a toast is to this login form, right? Because right now, if I type in invalid credentials, I get sent to an error page, right? Which is the behavior uh, that is expected. However, we can intercept that. And instead we can say your authentication failed, please try again um, without actually redirecting the user to this page. So let's go ahead and set that up for this login page here. So we'll go back into our application. We can close out of the layout now. We don't need that anymore. And then we'll go over to the login page. And then inside of the page.svelte is where we're actually gonna have to handle this at, okay? So right now we're not progressively enhancing this form and we're gonna need to do so. So let's go ahead and define a submit function. So we can say submit login. And this is going to return an async callback, which takes in results and update. And if you're not familiar with how these submit functions work. I just posted a video on this a couple days ago. Go check that video out. I'll have a card in the top right for that. So then we're gonna set up a switch statement. So we'll switch based on result.type and then we'll say case of success. What we wanna do is we wanna say await update and then break. We also wanna say case invalid. We want to render toast.error. And you can see that toast was automatically imported here from Svelte French Toast. And we could say invalid credentials. And then we'll also await update here. And then we'll break. And then we're going to set the case error. Now, error is actually going to come from our action here, our form action. Okay. And right now we're just throwing kind of a generic error. Uh, what we could do is we could actually become, we could drill down a bit into that error. We get the error status and then the error message as well. And then use those here. And then we can actually access those if we go to toast.error and we say result.error.message. And then what we'll do is we're not going to await update here, right? Because that's going to render the nearest error boundary and we want to remain on this page. So we'll say break again. And then for default, we'll say await update. Okay. Of course, we could add loading to this as well. So we say let loading equals false. And then come in here and set loading to true. We don't need this form tag here. And then if we come down to our form in our inputs, we can say disabled equals loading. And then we can put that on the inputs as well, as well as the button. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and try this out. So if we go to log in, if we just type nothing in at all, you're going to see that we get invalid credentials, right? And right now we forgot to set loading to false at the end of our uh, callback. So let's set that to false loading equals false. So we hit login, we get invalid credentials. If we type in actual invalid credentials, so we just aren't able to log in, we have an incorrect username and password. You'll see that we get failed to authenticate and that's coming from pocket base. And if we open up our terminal here, you can see that this is the message we got back in that error that was thrown. A 400 with failed to authenticate from pocket base. Okay, so now if we successfully log in, 
you'll see that those inputs were disabled temporarily and then we were redirected to the home page okay now one other place you could add toast i guess you could add it in multiple places throughout the application but i'll leave that at your own liberty to go ahead and do that now that you have a general idea as to how to do so um, but one place i could see it definitely being useful is for the my project section here so if we added another project really quick you can see that we now have three projects here that are being displayed. And when I delete this project, I would like for it to give me a notification that it was, you know, successfully deleted. Okay. So let's go into our components here. And that's where that form is inside of our, my project item component. We can see that the delete project form is here. So we can actually set up a very similar function as what we just set up. So let's go into our login page here and just copy all of this. Go into the, my project item. We'll set up loading and then we'll say submit delete project okay and in this case now in case of success we want to say toast.success and we'll say project deleted successfully and then we shouldn't have any type of validation errors here um, so we'll just delete that uh, for error we could just say could not delete project try again later uh, but we don't want to render the error boundary here okay and then everything else can remain as is and then we'll come down here to our use enhance and we'll pass this submit delete project and then we can also disable this button here whenever we're loading okay so now if i go to delete this project and i click confirm to delete we'll see that project deleted successfully so now, in order to render out some projects before we deploy the application in the next video, let's go ahead and just create a project card component uh, that we're going to render out on the home page in a grid fashion. Again, feel free to do this however you would like. This is just to kind of, you know, wrap up the project here. So we'll copy this component, come into our components, and we'll create a project card component. We'll paste all of that in, and then we'll open up some script tags. We're no we know that we're probably going to take in a project here, right? So we'll say export let project. And then for this image, what we can do is we can actually grab this from somewhere else. So we go to projects and then we go to project ID. This page here has this image tag that we can just take and replace this one with. And then we'll need to delete data dot on all of these and just keep project dot. And then we'll of course need to import get image URL from our lib slash utils. And then what we'll do is we'll say project.name and then we'll have project.tagline and we'll have a uh, view project here. And then this is actually going to be an A tag and we'll set the href to slash projects slash project.id. And then for this image, right now we're rendering out a thumbnail. Uh, we don't want this to be a thumbnail. We want it to be full size. Um, so for this one, we can also put like 500 or something for the time being, and then we'll save this. Okay. So now what we can do is we can come into our home page. Well, actually first let's export the uh, component here. Okay. So now we can come into our home page and clear all of this out. We'll open up some script tags. We'll import project card. We'll also need to take in data, which we actually have to, we need to actually fetch um, first. So let's actually do that. So let's create a new page.server.js inside of our root directory. And then we can set up a load function here. So we can say export const load. And we'll set up a try catch. We'll say const projects equals await. We actually need to take in locals here of the load function locals.pb.collection projects.get full list. And it's going to be undefined because we don't want to specify a max, a max size here. And then we'll just return projects and we'll catch any errors. Of course, we'll log them and then throw them. Okay. And then we can go down here and say return projects is going to be get projects. I need to import error from SvelteKit, and there we go. Okay, cool. So now we should have a data.projects. So what we can do is we can just basically set up a very basic layout here. And then we'll set up a grid. 
and really it's going to depend on how you want to style this out again don't think too much into this piece it's just as an uh, just for an example so what we'll do is we'll say each data dot projects as project and then we'll render out the project card and we'll pass the uh, project here So now we go to our application and we go to the home page. Let's see here, we're getting an error. What is that? Oh, data return from load is not serializable. So we actually need to serialize that. So I apologize for that. So we need to serialize non POJOs. I wanted to import that from our utils. There we go. Now, obviously this looks a little bit crazy. So let's adjust our project card just a bit here to like 72 maybe. Um, and then let's also maybe reduce the amount of columns that we have. So three, but yeah, that's how we can kind of start to display some of these projects. When you click on a project, you get taken to the page. Whatever you want to do with that there is what you could do. And I think it's going to conclude this video. Um, in the next video, we're going to actually be deploying this application uh, using Vercel and Fly.io. So I hope you're looking forward to that. Um, don't forget, I live stream on the channel pretty regularly. So please stop by and say hi on one of the live streams. If you have any questions, concerns, you can join our Discord server. Uh, we have a growing community of people that are always willing to help. So thank you all so much for watching. Have a great week. I will see you all in the next video.